today I'm going to do a full scene breakdown of the cloth animation you just saw. So Cinema 4D, Unreal Engine 5. I'll try to be quick and I'm wearing a hat because my hair is just not it today. Like and subscribe. Am I in frame? I don't know. So we're in Cinema 4D now. I've got two planes for my basic cloth setup. These are the subdivisions and sizes for each of them. Then you'll wanna add a cloth tag to them. So right click, simulation tags, cloth tag. These are the cloth settings I used if you wanna copy them. The next thing you wanna do is press Control D to go to your project settings and under simulation and scene, set your gravity to zero. And I also set my scene scale to 100. I think it might already be that on default. Yep, it is. Now, once you have your gravity turned off, the two forces I used was a basic turbulence force. So pretty high strength and I scaled it way up because my cloth sizes are huge. I then used a rotation force with a spherical field in the center. So if I enable that, you can see here, I've got a rotation force just so there's some movement in the center of the cloth that then pulls it in from the outside and just gives it a bit more dynamic uh, movement before the actual colliders go into it. Angle speed 20, spherical field, whatever this is. The next thing I did was make these three spheres. Then you wanna keyframe them in the direction you want. So this one goes horizontal. As you can see, this one is also horizontal, but going the other way at the top of the cloth. And then the third one is diagonally moving upwards. A really simple setup, just two keyframes for the position values. Once you're happy with your collider movement, right click simulation and then add a collider tag. Once you've messed around with your simulation enough, the next thing you wanna do is select any of the tags, go to cache and then cache scene. If you notice any glitches or weird artifacts happening in your simulation, you can go to your project settings. So control D again, and then simulation, simulation again, and then up the sub steps, iteration, the dampening or smoothing, and as well as the collision passes. Once your scene has finished caching, now I will chuck my planes into a cloth surface to give it some thickness. And then I will also put it in a subdivision surface that subdivides it twice. As you can see by doing that, it adds a lot more smoothness to the mesh, obviously more polys as well, but that will make sure we don't get a weird faceted look when we are rendering in Unreal. Now, the only thing left is modeling the window frame surrounding the dynamic elements. All I did was model one of these window frames. I then instanced them out into a row of my desired length. Next, I used the symmetry node to have them mirroring on either side. I then did that for the other two sides. And then I used the cloner to add two more rows. I've organized my cinema file between the static elements and the dynamic elements. For exporting, the first thing I'll do is isolate my window frames and then save that out as a Cineware file. You don't need to worry about the Cineware settings for this one because there are no animations or materials. The next thing I'll do is select my three spheres and then do a file export selected objects as an Alembic. Make sure your start and end frame match and make sure you also note what FPS your project is at because that will be crucial info for Unreal Engine later on. You can check that by pressing Ctrl D, go to project and then check your FPS. Select your spheres, file, export selected objects as Alembic. Check all the settings are correct. I'm only doing selection only. I don't need anything else my start and end frame are correct, and then you can hit OK. For my cloth, I have put my subdivision surface underneath a connect object modifier. This will make sure that all my subdivisions and cloth surface modifiers get baked down, but I don't need to worry about doing that within my Cinema 4D file. This makes sure I can have kind of a non-destructive workflow in case I wanna change something later on. Select your connect object, go to file, export selected objects as Alembic, and do the exact same thing we did before. You should now have these three files so I have my cloth alembic, my spheres alembic, and my Cineware window frames. As you can see, the cloth alembic is huge, so just make sure you have enough hard drive space if you are working with large alembic files. Another thing is to make sure you are saving these and exporting these large files out onto your local hard drive and not a cloud storage solution, even if you have made them available for offline. I found working with files off of cloud storage, even if they are available offline, can have some corrupt issues or corruption issues in Unreal, where alembics won't load in if you load up the same project a second time after closing. So again, just make sure you are working locally with all your asset files. All right, let's jump into Unreal. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so in Unreal, open up any of your projects. I'm using 5.3.2. Right click in your content browser, create a new level, call it whatever you want. This should be a completely blank level. First thing we'll do is drag in an HDRI. Go up to the plus menu, lights, HDRI backdrop, drag it in and then zero out the coordinates. If it is not showing up in your menu, go up to the edit plugins menu and then type in HDRI and make sure you have it enabled. Once it's in the scene, I'm gonna apply a gray HDRI map to it. You can make this in Photoshop by just having a solid color of that is a light to mid gray or whatever color you want actually. But you can also download the exact same one I'm using in the link in the description. Now the next thing we'll do is select our HDRI, set the Z location to negative 3500, set the size to 5000, now you can see we get this nice gradient fall off and then you can play with the brightness as you like. The next thing we'll do is drag in a post process volume. So plus button, volumes and post process. I'm just gonna do the usual settings. And if you wanna learn more, check out my previous video on how to make a fresh project from scratch for 3D art and product biz. So the settings, infinite extent, just gonna disable auto exposure, turn off bloom and turn off lens flares. Now let's start importing our geometry. If you are using Cineware, make sure you have the plugin enabled. So again, go to the plugins menu, type in Cineware and make sure you have Cineware by Maxon enabled. To import, go to the plus menu, Datasmith file import, and this is where I'll import my windows. These are the settings I'll use for import. Make sure you have geometry caches deselected, then hit import. I'm just gonna apply this basic metal material to my frames. It is just an orange color on 0.4 roughness at one metallic. If you want to learn more about making a basic master material, check out my UE5 materials tutorial. Okay, now let's import our Alembics. Just go to the content browser, import, select your Alembic. This is the window that should pop up. Again, just make sure your frame start and end match your Cinema 4D timeline and also make sure your Alembic import type is set to geometry cache and not static mesh. By default, it will be static mesh. So again, choose geometry cache and then all the way down at the bottom, change your conversion preset from Autodesk Maya to 3ds Max, then hit import. It should pop into your content browser like this. So now just drag it in, zero out the coordinates and they should pop into place because all your coordinates are relative to the Cinema 4D file. Next, do the same exact thing with your cloth. This import, because it is a huge file, will take a bit longer. So just keep that in mind. Once it appears in your content browser, again, drag it in. It might be a bit chuggy, there we go. And then again, zero out the coordinates. Make sure you remember to save all in all of this shenanigans. What am I saying? Make sure you remember to save all during this whole process. For the material on my kaleidospheres, I'm just gonna use this brushed aluminum metal from Grayscale Gorilla. It's a very simple material, just a metallic material with a brushed roughness and normal map, but you guys can use whatever you want. And it crashed. I guess this is a good time to remind you to like and subscribe. Also, this is why we save all, because it crashed. Wow, I'm a genius. Okay, now that I am back from crashing, I'm going to apply my cloth material, which is pretty much a duplicate of my frames material, but I have changed the color to blue. So first we will set up our animation sequence. In your sequence folder, right click cinematics level sequence, ls underscore anim for animation underscore cloth, or actually just name it the level that you're using, cloth underscore tutorial. Double click your sequence and open it up. I've docked mine at the bottom here. Now let's drag in our Alembic files into our sequencer. So I don't know why there's a duplicate. Drag our cloth in and then drag our spheres in. The next thing we wanna do is make our timeline the correct uh, length. Set our cursor or marker to 900. Hit the right square bracket key to set our out point. Now go back to the beginning of your sequence, hit the plus button, do geometry cache, and then on the spheres, do the same thing, plus geometry cache. Now our animation is playing. Quite cool. Now currently our lighting looks trash, and that is because we have a pure white light just shining onto our entire scene. Now my intention with this HDRI is actually to just have it as a background, but not actually light the scene. So first thing we'll do is 
click our HDRI backdrop and in the details panel, select our skylight and turn that down to zero. So now we have our background, but no lights are actually affecting our geometry. The next thing we'll do is drag in a rectangular light. Let's just put him in position, rotate him down. Let me enable snapping. Use the scale tool to up the attenuation radius. And then I'm just gonna turn up the brightness all the way. I'm gonna keep the light source width and height small because I like the sharper shadows, but you can increase it if you do want more of like a soft fill light. Now the next thing you can do is also just alt drag it. And now I'm holding shift to move with the light, rotate it up. And now you've got like a dual light setup. Now let's start playing with our camera shots and animated lights. So again, right click cinematics level sequence ls underscore cloth tutorial underscore s1 for shot one. Also, I think I'm going to brighten up our backdrop a little bit just because it seems a little dark at the moment. Yeah, I think something like that is better. Make sure you remember to save all in case you crash like I did. Now the next thing we want is our animation track in our shot track so that we can reference the animation. So hit the plus track subsequence make sure our timeline matches our animation length hit the plus button and then go to cloth anim cloth tutorial and then this is also why we reset our playhead back to the start but it's all right you can just drag it in so now our cloth moves in our shot track as you can see. Next, I'm gonna add a spawnable camera. Now for this shot, I know I want it to be further out and a high focal length. I might go to somewhere here. Next thing I'll do is change my aspect ratio to Instagram real ratio, so I know how to frame my shot. Also, if you wanna learn about how to do all these favorites and things like that, again, check out my previous video, which is how to set up a fresh project for a 3D artist. Now I'm just gonna zero out my rotation, move down a little bit. Now zero out my rotation, change my focal length to 150, zoom out a little bit more, change my ray trace culling to zero. I'm gonna go to my two pane view, which I go over in my tutorial. Okay, I will stop plugging it now. Select my camera. Now I'm gonna exit my camera from this view. Just play with the composition a bit. Change to my local pivot point, move in a bit. Maybe I wanna fill the frame a bit more, something like that. Now, for some reason, my Alembic seemed to have imported a bit lower than I thought because this framing's a bit weird. So I'm just gonna select both of them and then drag them up a bit. Again, not really sure why this has happened, did not happen in my other file. As long as I drag both of them up, all the coordinates should stay relatively the same. Now I'm happy with how the cloth looks here and I kind of want my sequence to start around this frame 150. So I'm just going to drag the start of my subsequence to 150 and then drag it back. Now let me get some lights in the scene. Again, I'm gonna get another rectangular light. Let me just double check which side my camera is facing. So my camera is viewing the geometry from this direction. I'm just gonna move my light around here. Probably gonna elongate it a bit. Yeah, I think I like the way it's highlighting the orange frames there. Now the shadowed areas here are a bit too dark for me. So I'm just gonna copy my light over, select it, alt and drag. I just want a few highlights on the back frames. Frame. I think something like that should work. I'll just turn down the intensity a bit. Maybe make my height smaller again, just to get some harsher shadows. That should be good. Now I just need a light for my cloth because it is a bit dark from this angle. Ang just copying the light over again and rotating it and then just placing it where I think it could look good. I think up lighting looks quite good in this instance. Probably soften it up a bit. I'm just going to quickly select all my lights and make sure they are movable as well. Just going to copy another one around there and then turn down the brightness a bit. Now the last thing that I need to do is actually set my focus on the cloth, turn off my grid. And now I'll just give it a final look. And for now, that should be good. This is looking a little too warm for me, but you can just play around with the lights a bit more. Now, all the lights that I've just added, I'm going to now drag into the sequencer. So select these lights that I've put here and then the two interior lights. So this guy 
and this guy. I'm just gonna drag them all into my sequence, close them all down, select them, right click, convert to spawnable. So now all these lights belong to this sequence. Now I don't need to worry about turning lights on and off per sequence. It'll just stick and be all contained within this guy. I'm also gonna select them all and right click, move them into a folder and call it lights. Now I just need to slowly animate them. I'm gonna select this top light right here and actually move them up and then in the drop down, add a keyframe to the transform, drag it out to about 10 seconds, or that is 10 seconds, frame 300, drag him down, and then you can hit enter, or you can just click the keyframe button again. I think I will, oh, and also the reason it added a keyframe when I hit enter to all of these components is because I'm selecting the parent, but if you just have the transform track selected, it'll only add a keyframe to that track. Now I'm just going to do that with all these lights. I'm going to make this guy start around the bottom. Again, go to frame 300. While you do that, you can actually hit the right square bracket to change your in and out point to that uh, frame 300 right there. That way you now have a 10 second clip, but you can extend it if you want to. With this guy, I'm just going to animate the intensity from 0 to 100. So 0 all the way up to 160, sorry. And I will leave the back rim light, this guy here, and not animate him just because I like what it's giving to the scene. Cool, and now you have the final shot with some slightly dynamic lights. Your Alembic is playing, and we have the white background that is not affecting our geometry. Now we just need to make a couple more shots. So I'm going to select our shot one, press Control D to duplicate. And now it'll auto rename to S2, which is now going to become our shot two. I'm going to pilot the camera and now move around a bit. I think I want more of a top down shot now, something like that. Now I think I want the beginning of this animation. So just going to expand our anim track back to zero, adjust the camera again, maybe something like that. Hit save, duplicate shot two. Now we have a shot three. This guy's gonna be a bit more of a longer, I mean a wider lens, so a 75, which is still pretty long. And I want this to be more of maybe a close up on one of the spheres. Now I'm just gonna go through each of the two shots I just made and adjust the lighting to my liking, <laughs> rap god. The lighting to my liking, okay, relax. Now I'm just gonna animate the lights. Once you're happy with all your three shots, let's now make a master sequence. So right click cinematics level sequence, LS underscore master underscore cloth tutorial for me. Now we just need a sub sequence track and now we can just add our sequences or our shots that we just made and then hit the plus tutorial S2 and then plus again, tutorial S3. Now just drag out your end range. Just gonna drag my S2 here and then my S3 here. It's gonna go to frame 900, set my end range with the square bracket. And now we also, last thing, really important, plus track, camera cut track. Now our camera will actually look through whatever our subsequence camera is showing. Just gonna drag down my window and now we can see all of our shots in our master sequence. And now you can see I'm actually out of focus in shot two, so I can double click it, go into that shot, and now adjust my depth of field. Then you just go back, make sure you hit save, save selected, and now you can see all of our shots here. Now you can add an audio track if you want, and this also lets you change how long you want each shot to be so that you're not rendering extra frames and also just minimizing post-production. Once you're happy with your master sequence, just go up, hit this movie render queue icon. I'm just gonna load a config that I have, one of these guys. If you wanna learn more about that, I know I promised last promo, but my previous video goes over some render settings, and then you just hit render. Hopefully that breakdown was helpful. Let me know if I missed anything or you want to learn more about things or you have any suggestions. This was more of a fast paced one again because it was a breakdown. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.